An advocacy group, Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has urged the President, Mohamed Buhari, to halt an executive bill seeking to amend the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Act. SERAP said it believed the amendment, which seeks to bring the EFCC under the control of the Attorney General of the Federation in the Ministry of Justice, would turn the anti-graft agency into a toothless bulldog. In an open letter on Sunday by its deputy director, Kolawole Ludari, to President Buhari, Serap recalled that the chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Professor Ishe Sage, SAN, had last week expressed concerns about the effect of the proposed executive bill. Joining us on our phone is a legal practitioner, Bolan Leo Lugbani. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Uh, quickly share your views. Do you agree with uh, Serap uh, with um, what they are saying to the president this, uh, this time? Well, to a, to a large degree, Serap is right. The system of government we run is the presidential system of government where there is separation of powers and each arm of government, that is the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary operate separately and distinctly from each other and also serve as checks and balances on each other. So if the constitution, or rather the law establishing the EFCC, says the appointing authority of the EFCC chairman is the president of the republic, we who must nominate and must get approval from the Senate, once you remove the oversight function which the Senate will have by approving the EFCC nominee and you put the appointing authority of the EFCC nominee under the office of the Attorney General who will now be allowed to appoint. It means that there are no checks and balances. The direct control of the EFCC is under the political arm of a branch of government which is the executive. So if the EFCC becomes an appendage of the Federal Ministry of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice appoint the EFCC chair, it can be directed to go against anybody in whichever manner. And the independence, as it were, of the EFCC will be lost. So, so don't you think, um, because over time we've all also seen that the EFCC chairman and the attorney general of the federation, you know, have, you know, somehow, somewhere always had their own clashes. So don't you think that this might somehow bring them under the same roof and make them have a better working relationship uh, for the greater good of the fight against corruption? You see, it's a fundamental principle of natural justice that you cannot be a judge in your own court. In a prosecution for any alleged offense, the government of the day, the federal government of Nigeria, is the accuser. The judiciary is the adjudicator. That is an impartial arbiter or someone who gives fair hearing to the accused and the accuser and who judges whether one is guilty or not. But when you make the accuser the prosecutor and the eventually the determinant of whether there is a case or not in such a direct manner. The semblance of independence or neutrality of the EFCC is lost. Confidence is lost. And to the ordinary man on the street, it appears that uh, we have moved from an era of administrative separation of powers to one of direct, almost tyrannical control. So what do you think you know, may be behind this decision? Do you think that the presidency um, may have um, reasons why they you know, think that this move might be better? Um, and do you also think that the president would listen to uh, the uh, Serap? The president is not likely to listen to Serap because uh, it appears to be a done deal. It's a fait accompli. The Attorney General is an appointee of the President. The President has considered his power under this draft bill to the Attorney General of the Federation. I don't know whether he'll be acting on behalf of the President. 
But he nominates the FCC chairman under this draft bill. And it appears that uh, the Senate may not have a say as much as, as, much as it should in the way and manner the FCC is run on the, or the ability to do oversight function with this new arrangement. So I don't know what the intention for this amendment is, but I think that in a proper democracy, the prosecuting agency should be seen to be devoid of executive and political influences as much as possible. Bolan Leo Lugbani, thank you so much for speaking with us and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much.